Hey everybody, it's me, Corey, Truly Evil Bob, and I'm here at a local game shop in Anchorage to ask people what their favorite gaming stories are. This is Tavern Tales. Hi, I'm Peter, and I'd like to tell you a gaming story. This was a few years ago during the playtesting for Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. The party was in a giant dungeon under Thag. They were wandering through an area that was unfamiliar to them, and they ran into a demon. The demon made a sonic attack on them and alerted everyone within 300 yards. After fighting off the demon, which was a fair fight again for a party of their level, the noise attracted the archboss of the whole dungeon, the lich, who strode out of his area and dropped a cloud kill on the entire party. Wait, what level were these people? They were about level six. And they were fighting a lich? Yes. That's... So the first cloud kill hurt them. I, I rolled a 19 for the Lich's initiative. The second cloud kill uh, led to every member of the party uh, dying except for one. The gnome had only taken one cloud kill. Was this, was their reaction charge or run away at this point after the first cloud kill? They didn't have a chance to do very much. They uh, were still too busy fighting. So did these players know that the Lich was nearby, or did they have any inkling? Not at all. This is, so this, this is nothing this they could have done anything dungeon. about. They knew nothing about this. <laughs> You're right, when you said this might make you look cruel, it does kind of make you look cruel. It's wonderful. The gnome got away, and one other member of the party, she rolled a 20 on her death save and got up and ran, and they were able to get away to the teleport portal. The other three members of the party died horrible. They were lying on the floor at negative hit points, and as the lich walked by, finger of death, finger of death, finger of Dutch. Just by touching them, he gave them multiple death saving throw failures and they died. And the moral of this story is don't fight a lich. So you run the D&D uh, &D encounters here in Anchorage, right? Yes. And how long have you been doing? How long have you been gaming? I have been gaming for 38 years since junior wow. high school. Nice. So first edition AD&D or second edition AD&D? Uh, I was actually before first edition. It was basic D and D. It was base. I, I started. My off first character was a wizard with two hit points who died in the second fight in uh, <laughs> Temple of Omelette. Yeah. <laughs> I had so many characters die in Xandar's dungeon. It's just <laughs> the amount of hit points you get at first level in those old games is pathetic. How you doing? Pretty good. What's your name? Brian Ross. Brian Ross. I'm Corey. Uh, how long you been gaming? Well, uh, with Dungeons and Dragons, since I was in uh, just out of high school, that's 1986. That was second edition then. Yeah. I took a big break off of that, and I recently got back into gaming, um, probably less than a year ago, and on fifth ed. You enjoyed fifth edition? I'm liking fifth edition more than second edition. It's just, um, it's a lot more logical. Uh, it tries to explain things and tries to simulate them in a lot more reasonable fashion. I, I think. So you got a story uh, of. <laughs> What do you got for me? What I got for you is uh, from the legend of Strahd. Of Strahd? Yeah, Strahd, Strahd, however they say the, it. The vampire king. The vampire of king. Right. And uh, it's the final battle. Uh, leading up to this, uh, my party has managed to overcome many obstacles. And I have the Sun Blade, which is uh, the blade that Strahd tried to destroy. He only destroyed part of it, and the inner Sun Blade, the light inside of it, survived, and it had a real mat on for Strahd. Um, it also feared that Strahd might destroy it. It had a personality, an emotional, um, an empathetic you, personality. You got this light. Right, and I'm a monk. So, how are you using this light? Well, it's a power that can actually enhance a monk's abilities because at that level, which is around 10, a monk. Uh, strikes as a magical weapon, has multiple attacks, but with this you can actually add damage and add hit point bonuses and of course it has the light that it can shine and it's really just an anti-undead weapon. And I'm thinking this is great, I've got a great party backing me up, they're right over there. Um, <laughs> We've got a variety of powers, and we're ready. We go into it, and I'm thinking, I've got the weapon I need to beat Strahd. This sounds like it's going to go south very fast. <laughs> well, you know, the best light plans, that type of thing. Um, and, you know, what's more is that we've started really gelling together. You know, the, 
the, the cleric and the fighters and the, the rogues, they all are just doing what they're supposed to do. And it's almost like we know what the other person's going to do before we do it. So I, we go in there and the first thing that happens is I fail a saving throw and my blade gets yanked telekinetically from my hand and it's out of reach. And so then I rush to go and attack Strahd because I hit like yeah, a magical weapon. Yeah, yeah. Magic fist. Right, right. And as soon as I do that, boom, I'm teleported myself because I run into a trap uh, like, a, like a newbie. <laughs> and I'm like, why am I in this dark box? Boom, 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 boom. And I'm in a crypt. And uh, so it takes me a little while to get out of that crypt. And uh, when I get out of that crypt, I come running up there and Strahd's using all of his lair abilities and he's walking on the ceiling and he's turning invisible and I don't have my weapon and I'm just trying to find him and the DM plays it where as I get closer to the sword I hear it since it's tuned to me the, the emotions get louder or, so you, you can know, track the sword because it talks to you basically. a little bit I mean yeah. that's the way the DM played it I'm still too new to know you're that's like, the way it's supposed to be but you're like Deanna Troy from Star Trek only with swords yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> and I keep trying to home in on it and gets closer and I finally get close enough to where he's already taken quite a bit of damage and he's trying to get away and I'm thinking when am I gonna hit him <laughs> until finally I get to the final part where I can throw one or two hits on him knock him down he turns to mist yes and we trap him. I got one maybe two hits on him none with a sun blade I was the most, it was the most useless, I was the most useless person in that entire oh. thing. So what did the rest of your party do while he was walking, how'd they fare? They did, they did fine, they were hitting him with this, this thing, that thing, they were trying to track him down. Um, he was using all of his abilities to uh, attack them. But, but the main thing he did was he separated the party because three of us got thrown into the crypt and had to come back up there, so he divided us like that. Well, that's, but, it's a good thing you survived then. Yeah. Because separating the party is a huge, like... Oh, yeah, that's the big no-no. That's oh, the big no-no. Pretty much after that, we looted the castle, became incredibly rich, and uh, then they became changed... the new lord of the Ravenloft exactly. and lived like exactly. evil gods. Exactly. And then uh, so I'm thinking, great, now what's next for my mug? Oh, we're going back to first level. Shoot. You went back to first level? Yeah, so we had to start with new characters now. Oh, like well, you know, when, when, when a character's story is over, I'm a firm believer that when a character's story is over, you need to move on. Yes. But it story. wasn't over. He was just becoming the legend that is this monk. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? My name's John. How are you? Hi, John. I'm Corey. I do Tavern Tales. We're talking about our best experiences with role-playing games. you play Dungeons & Dragons? I do. How long have you been playing? Uh, probably about a year and a half now. So, I'm sure in a year and a half of playing, he had some great adventures. You want to share one with me? Sure. Uh, I think one of my favorite adventures, I was playing a archer, a scout, if you will. And um, the whole purpose, we were gathering around a, uh, a cave that had orcs in it that had just stolen away some villagers. And uh, I look at my DM and I'm like, all right, I'm going to cast invisibility, I'm going to scout ahead. If you guys don't hear back from me in you know, 30 seconds, come in after me. Everyone agrees, we start the plan, and I start sneaking in. And I realize pretty fast that the inside of this cave is massive. But at this point I figure it's, it's eventually gonna hit a dead end and I can come back. After six, seven stealth rolls, I'm, I'm in deep and I, <laughs> I, it's too far to go back so I just have to pray that the continuing forward is fine. Again, to this big, massive eating room. I, and I bet in the back of your head you're like, why did we split the party? <laughs> oh, the entire time, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I'm a squishy little scout. And so I get into the, uh, the opening of a banquet room and I look at my DM and I'm like, this is a cave, right? So rock floor, he's like, yeah. It's like, I take a pebble and I want to throw it over and knock off one of the uh, torches on the wall. He's like, really? I was like, yeah, you know, spy movie style. He's like, all right, go ahead and roll. Nat 20. <laughs> so I roll, he's like, yeah, you did it. They didn't see you all of a sudden. And so that became my method of going through it. I started just throwing pebbles over to the other side of the walls, knocking off lanterns. To and make everybody look the other way? Exactly, and yeah. I made it. Halfway through, I made it to the sleeping quarters. The uh, people in the beds are stirring. I've passed maybe 18 orcs already. And so I, I look at the DM, I'm like, I'm gonna do the one thing I can do, and I'm gonna go out in style. I creep over to the bed, I'm like, I wanna execute him. <laughs> okay, roll, crit, wonderful. Roll to keep stealth, crit, wonderful. Wow. Yeah, I was like, you. all right, 
I guess I'm going for two. Crit fail. <laughs> you trip over the bed and you land on me, grabs a hold of you. And it was at that time that the time had gone off and my party started to raid through it, so I'm, I, I roll to get out of it. I run back and I try and jump over my traps and make it through the entire time my party is barreling in, just s destroying everyone in their path trying to catch up to me. And I think I made it back to my party with maybe two health. But it was, it was the time when I learned that I'm, I'm not scouting ahead inside dungeons ever again. But you lived! I did, I you lived. lived. Thanks, man, that was awesome. Thank you. So what's your name? Hunter. Hunter, how old are you, Hunter? I'm 10. 10? What grade is 10, 10th grade? I'm gonna be in fifth grade this August. So you play Dungeons and Dragons. I see you at Dungeons and Dragons Encounters here at the game shop. Yeah. How long have you been playing? Yeah, I'm just the last day of school because my teacher taught me how to play. So two months. Pretty much. Uh, what's your favorite experience playing Dungeons and Dragons so um, far? I like probably defeating a lot of monsters. What was the biggest monster you defeated and how did you defeat it? Okay, so there was a golem, I believe, that was like the like taller, like it. You probably can't see on this, but it was like as high as one of those posters. And there, and I can't remember exactly how I defeated it, but I believe I did magic missiles. So you were playing a wizard, or were you like a bard? I was a rogue, actually. A rogue? How are you doing magic missiles as a rogue? And when I got to like level three, I became an arcane trickster. 